So, staying five years in a relationship, how it has been and how do I predict the future? So, the first lesson that I've learned from women, do not predict their moods, do not predict the future, do not be sure that everything is working out fine and everything is all right. When I have had expectations towards my beautiful wife, then she has done everything to crumble them and destroy each tiny part of my expectation. But as long as I observe the moment, I don't predict her moods. I am fine. I have been together with my wife for five years. We have a child and she has a child from my previous relationship. And that has been the foundation for our relationship. How can we together mingle love and have good time while living our lives. And actually, I have known her over 10 years. So, that's been a long time. And, and we have shared four homes together. The first home we lived there for three years, then we moved while we were building a house for two years. And now, for the last year, we have been living in our own house. And what this relationship has taught me the most, that a man leads the way. When a man has a goal, then a woman follows. So, when she got pregnant, I said, I'm going to build a house for us. We had some spare cash and we started searching for a plot of land or an old house to renovate. We found one, it was a complicated process that I have shared in other, other videos. Basically, we were not able to buy the house in the beginning and I fought and my wife was like, what are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> like, let's find another place. And I'm, I'm like, no, that's our, our home. We are going to go there. And eventually we did it. So you see, there's, a fine line between should you listen to your woman or no? And how can you find out what's the truth? Should you listen or no? As a young, young adult and as a young boy, I struggled of being a leader. So I was always trying to listen what are the needs and things of the girls and the women and and I struggled. But I, when I learned this one thing, I stopped struggling. So the fine line between the listening, there's this saying that man is the head, chooses the direction, and the woman is the neck that directs that head towards a goal. And essentially, in a nutshell, it is like so. In my aunt's home, when we go in the, in the door, open the door there's this sign like man makes the big decisions in the home but the woman decides if the thing is a big or small so in the in the situations when i have set a goal like mm, creating my business or building a house, going on a holiday, and when we have some kind of obstacles on our way, then the woman, my wife, has always been the one that talks. That she's she's like, are we sure? Should we go? Let's stay home. Let's let's not go. And I'm not like, no, don't interrupt me. We are going there, we are doing that. And when she realizes the process is going, she follows and she enjoys it. 
because she feels safe because the, the man the husband is determined all the men who strug struggle with determination with the goals in life they struggle with their women with their wives and the relationship is like like all the seasons together like it can be a winter a spring a summer an autumn sometimes we find a lot of intimate contact like having sex three times a day before the child it happens quite often yet three four times even sex on the beach in a car at home wow beautiful but but and during the pregnancy also but after we had a child then we had this stereotypical struggle that for a year we do, did not have an intercourse because she did not want because she was struggling with two children and uh, and the stress of moving from one place to another but it's normal but the hardest part for men is to come in terms with it like oh she does not want me anymore of course she wants but there's just too many people wanting her attention so no worries but what i found out is that taking care of her does not follow the rules of a woman oh darling i need some massage oh i need somebody to touch me like those <laughs> those clues that they are giving like oh if someone could take the trash out and oh i would like to have a touch on my body these are provocative provocative questions or provocative remarks that women are seeking for attention but i see it as a weakness when you fall immediately towards the attention seeking because there are always priorities in in your life and if you follow only the demands of your other half you become stuck in the relationship and you cannot develop personally yes there are some people who say satisfy first your spouse but I, I see it differently i see that first of all satisfy your needs your your need to accomplish something and then you can satisfy your women if you if you put the focus on her on satisfying her only you will end up broke you will end up empty i made that mistake for the first year in a relationship i totally tried to satisfy her all her needs i want to go there i want that i want that and all oh, this this and that and and my business failed i ran out of money i started struggling i i got tops of depression and i thought it was her it was her fault but actually i found out it was just my inability to center to my own needs and to my own sense of accomplishment because when i wake up in the morning i'm full of energy i need to go and do my stuff now when we have a child i take a child with me and i can do my stuff sometimes i bring her to the work sometimes i go outside into the nature as my, i make my videos i my child is playing around and sometimes she comes and performs on a video because that's just life there's no work life balance i have realized when you have have a family you, you have a wife and children there's no work life balance like you come home and start watching the telly no fuck you you cannot fucking watch the telly you're fucking irresponsible a adult if you are fucking watching telly when you have children and and a woman no you go and hang out with them you don't show screens to your children until they are 21 years old okay okay you can show some screens but 20 minutes 30 minutes but not not more your children don't need no screens 
They need your attention. They need to play with you. They need to have a nice time. They need experiences, being outside, traveling around. So my philosophy is that I take my children with me to my work because they have to see life. So I can't make a boring work. I can make a dull work. I have to make it interesting for them. Otherwise, I'm a failure. And it's not about satisfying their needs. No, it's never about satisfying the needs of my wife or my children. But it's just doing great things, things that inspire me, things that are fascinating for me, and I want to bring them with me. So there's this one rule I am I made. Actually, I heard it from Matthew McConaughey. And I understood that this philosophy goes with me as, as Ma Matthew McConaughey, he, he tamed his wife once upon a time. Then his wife heard that he was an actor and said, you go, we go. And I really love that philosophy. That when I go somewhere, I take my family. I have got work to do abroad. I take my family. I don't go there on a solo trip because that's, I see it's separation from my family. I just really love my children. I love hanging out with them. I love my family. But of course, every day I take my own time when I do my stuff in the man man's cave. I build, I do stuff with my hands, I learn, I study, I do some financial stuff. Like, for example, when I got into the, into the world of finances and started really concentrating on investing the money on the right places, and I started telling to my wife about everything, she got inspired and she started following me. And she was like, oh yeah, this, this looks great. So always when I, I get inspired by a thing, she follows. Like I started building up my business in a, on an e-commerce way. She got inspired and started following. When I really started taking off with the YouTube channel, she wanted to follow, but she, then she realized, oh, my skill of English is too bad. And then she started making videos on Facebook to her own audiences. So all the time when I take off somewhere, she follows. So that's the most important thing. If you want to have a healthy relationship, follow your passions, follow, follow your ambitions, your goals as a man. And to hold the relationship together, then forget the work-life balance. Always involve your children to your work life. Otherwise, there will be separate dimensions where you're living and then your relationship will start to crumble. As the words go, you go, we go. Keep, keep it in mind. You go, we go. We go together. You, as a leader of the family, a leader of the pack, we all go together. And of course, during those five years, we have had our fair share of fights and we got even married yeah that <laughs> and I, I will tell you the story how we got married so i i or the engagement story yeah i i, I was searching an uh, a jewelry maker i wanted it the ring to be done by a person that i know so i found one and uh, she, she was a jewelist, she made this engagement ring and, and then it was, a, it was a strange day, like I woke up in the morning and, and we were talking with, with wife and I said, I'm, I'm leaving you. <laughs> I just said, to her, I'm leaving you. And she's like, what? What do you mean? And I'm yeah, I'm leaving you. Like, <laughs> that's, that's my sense of humor, you know, really rough. So <laughs> she was like, what the heck? And I left, <laughs> and I left the house and, and then I, and I went to pick up the ring. So I got the ring and a few hours later and, and my wife is texting me and trying to call me. I'm not answering and, and then I'm back, back, back at home and knocking at the door and, no, and she answers and I go in, in the, in, into the house and she's looking at me like, what the fuck, <laughs> what are you doing? And then I'm like, take off your clothes. <laughs> I'm ripping off her clothes and my own clothes and, and I take out the 
wedding ring and just like or the engagement ring and will you marry me and just like whoa <laughs> what's going on <laughs> so maybe you understand when you are in the control of situation and when you get uh, make those strange things when, when you do th do the things that you want to do she just totally melts because she understands she's not in control she does not want to be in control but she thinks she wants to be in control did you understand that a woman does not want to be in control but she thinks she wants to be in control a man man is always in control so and you can surprise her you can kick off <laughs> her from her feet then things are going well like one day one night i i just all night long i i saw some dreams how i was uh, just um, touching her and being <laughs> and being really naughty with her yeah really naughty oh, I, I was seeing those dreams and and then we are just having a casual, casual conversation and she wants to cl clean the kitchen and and I'm like, no, stop it. I, I grab her and she's like, oh, no, let me go. And, then, and then, then I tell her, like, do you know what I saw in my dream? And then she's like, yeah, okay, what did you saw? Oh, I, I, I was seducing and, <laughs> and touching you all night long. And then she just melts in my hands. Because I captivated her attention from the mundane again. It's always finding those moments when you can captivate her attention from the mundane. From all the normal things that she's doing. You just rip her down, rip her off from there. And you start doing things that you want to do. And I don't mean like when, when a woman says no. When it's a real no, then listen. Then it's a real no. Then then just keep keep away, keep off. But when it's like a playful no, like no, 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 th then it's different. Then it's more like that you are showing your position. Because a woman needs a male who is an alpha male. And as I said in the beginning, from long time as a as a young adult and uh, as a boy I struggled with relationships and I struggled with my sense of domination because I was afraid of hurting their feelings I was afraid of being impolite and too persuasive I was afraid of my manly characters the man the manly characters of us are being impolite being persuasive being strong and being being stupid as as i used to be a really intellectual thinker now i'm more like a primal thinker i more follow my instincts because my instincts are always those that help me to live a life that is pleasant for me if i'm trying to serve other person i'm just like trying to fulfill her needs her like have impatient needs, I would say, then I struggle. But if I understand her real needs, the need for safety, the assurance that I will be home every evening, the rhythm that I'm living, that she understands it, then she knows how her needs are fulfilled. I must set the boundaries for her to feel good. And of course, we do not always agree about things. So how can we solve our problems when we do not agree? Then we shout at each other. Like you, 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 you. <laughs> we, and, and I must say, we are, when we are fighting, we are fighting. It's like this this thing like ah, we are fighting <laughs> but in five years time we have learned to fight less and when we get a conflict we resolve it really quickly like the last time when we had a conflict 
Like I'm, I'm like, I start shouting like, ah, again, you are making me so angry. And, and then, she, then she tells me, but can't you remember that, that lo yesterday you told that, that a man must do like this, act, act in favor of a woman. And I'm like, oh fuck, yeah. She told me just the truth and I cannot hide it anymore. I cannot be angry because she told me the truth. I think mostly, most misinterpretations and most fighting in a relationship comes from not being able to listen to the other person or not wanting to listen. <laughs> and when a person gets angry, then there's a truth behind the anger. When someone says something true and up comes the anger, that's the truth. And another person is ashamed of the truth. And that's why we get angry. Anger is a feeling when we are not ready to face the truth that is facing us. That's it. So, the most important question. Should you commit to a relationship? I see many men who are weak and fragile, even when they look like they're macho men, but they are not able to commit, commit to a relationship. That's just a weakness. I must say, that's the main source of satisfaction, of committing to a long-term relationship. And if it ends one day, then it ends. But being committed fulfills your soul and gives you a meaning. Have I wanted to separate from the relationship? Many times. Do, are we going to have fights? Of course we are going to have fights. But I'm happy, I'm content, and it gives a meaning to my life. I remember how I used to sit and stare at the ceiling, watch some stupid movies, and do some stupid shit with my life. Because I did not have a meaning. Yes, now I have m multiple levels of meaning. A meaning in my work, a meaning with my relationship. I have a children and I have a, a lot of people that I'm responsible of. A man finds a meaning in their life when they can be responsible of their actions, of their deeds and of their wishes. When they can take care of other people then a man finds a meaning in their life. So I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and join the waitlist to become a great storyteller in 90 days. And check out the videos for manifestation. And hit the bell button. So goodbye. When it's okay,